Hi everyone, welcome to week three. So as we keep chugging along, um, I've had some really good questions. First off, I would love for you all to come in and see me. And the reason I'm asking that is because I want to double check and see how things are going for you. How are the new methods that we've been trying? Are things working? Are they not working? And so if anything is or isn't going right, please come see me. Um, I also tend to use food to bribe students to get them to my office. <laughs> and that's intentional. <laughs> so worst case scenario, stop by, grab a bag of chips. You can run. It's totally fine. Um, but basically, I just want to make sure things are going okay. Some of the questions I've had are when are the assignments due? Um, like discussion and so forth. And so if you guys can turn in the assignments at the end of each week, for example, getting assignments two in at the end of week two, that would be really great. If you need time, it's not a big deal. Okay, I want you to get the most out of this class and this class is not meant to be stress stressful for you. It's meant to be helpful. So if it turns out you need extra time, just tell me. It's totally fine. Okay, so I'm a little bit behind in grading so I don't give you guys flack for turning assignments in late when <clears throat> every once in a while I run late too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, one of the first things I'd like for us to talk about this week is where you sit in the classroom. Okay, so I don't know about all of you, my habit was to sit in the back of the room. And that was because that's where I was the most comfortable. Um, I tended to be shy when I was an undergrad, believe it or not. <laughs> I was actually really shy and quiet. Um, I know that's probably hard to believe, but it's true. So I used to love to just kind of sit in back. Um, and from a student perspective, it's more comfortable back there. But realistically speaking, um, sitting up front really is the best. Okay, so first off, one of the reasons is that you're more likely to pay attention. Okay. Secondly, the instructor gets to know you. This is a good thing, right? You want your instructor to know you, okay? Additionally, then you can ask questions, all right? Now, something that you may or may not realize is that um, being in class gives you an advantage when it comes to learning the material. So really, you should go to every class. Now, it's one thing if you're sick or something personal happens or something along those lines, we all get that and life sometimes can just be a bit difficult, but every time things are going well for you and you're just kind of chugging along, you need to go to every class. Okay, so studies have shown that actually being there helps you to retain the information. So there's something to be said for being in the moment and asking questions and listening to others and being present. Okay. Also, key to being uh, to doing well in a class is to find a group of friends from that class to study with. Now, this is so incredibly important. I can't even emphasize it enough. And I will tell you, a lot of my college friends that, by the way, I still keep in touch with, even though it's been <coughs> oh, decades now <laughs> since I was in college, <laughs> um, I still am friends with them. Okay, and so we still keep track of one another. We watch to see how everybody's kids are doing and all sorts of other good stuff. So there is a really good chance that as you meet friends in classes, these are lifelong friends that you will, you know, get to keep. So take advantage of that. But find a group of friends to study with. And then immediately after class, try to study over your notes. Okay, if you have questions, ask then. So, so, you know, identify key points, identify positions of notes and, you know, where you need more information and less information, all sorts of other good stuff. So make sure that you, um, you know, take this to heart when it comes time to go to your next lecture, because I think you'll find this to be really helpful to you. So you might be asking yourself, so I go to class and I take these notes. So when would be the best times to review them? Um, most definitely immediately after class. Okay, so what I suggest you do is right after lecture, while the faculty member is still there, okay, go over your notes and make sure you understand everything. And if you don't understand, understand something, then go talk to your professor. Okay, it's why they're there. And then within 24 hours, go over your notes again. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about a recall column as far as how to take notes. All right, and so um, give me the next, you know, couple of slides to go over that. Please designate a specific time each week to review, okay? I can't even tell you how important this is because a lot of times we're like, oh, I'll just wait to study or I'll just wait to do this and oh, I got plenty of time. No, you don't. You need to review your class notes for that lecture, you know, every day. And the research has shown the more you review it, even if you just take, you know, half hour to an hour a day, the more likely you are to remember the information. Okay, you want to have a regular review, recitation, and practice. And then also, you want to start thinking about um, reducing the information to a chronological or time map or maybe even a mind map. 
okay? So um, this can help you keep things organized and figure out what you do and don't know. So there are five essential steps to really take control of your notes, okay? So taking notes is vital. I can't overemphasize the importance of taking notes. And so there are a lot of purposes to taking notes. Um, and to really do it and do it well, this is what you, you need in order to learn your lectures, okay? So the five essential steps, you need to record the information. Then what you need to do is reduce the ideas to a keyword or phrase in the left-handed margin. You want to recite it without looking at it. And by the way, if you can't, that means you don't know it. Okay, so as you go back and you sit there and you're trying to go over your notes, if you can't say it without looking it up, then it means you don't know it. And so later on, we're going to talk about, um, not this lecture, but maybe the next one, a method called Total Recall where you take out a blank piece of paper and you write down everything you know about a topic and then whatever you leave off is obviously what you don't know. Okay, so and we'll come back to that. But um, you really, in order to know it, you have to be able to recite it. Okay, then of course you want to review to get a complete picture of the ideas that were in your notes and then reflect. So when you reflect, you can speculate on the implications of the different facts and concepts and all sorts of other good stuff. So this kind of gives you an idea of, you know, to truly make the most out of your notes, I would definitely use these five steps. So we've talked previously about how the brain works and what a memory is and all sorts of other good stuff. And I just realized I totally forgot to cite the information. And I apologize for that. So I think what's going to happen is a lot of this information I get from different books, um, different professors and so forth. And so what I'll end up having to do to give proper credit to everybody is come up with a big old list that I'll end up posting at the end of this class. Um, and it will be helpful to all of you because then you can use those resources too. But some of the things we need to focus on with regards to rules of the brain, and remember last time we talked about how your brain processes information, okay? Remember that you want to build on prior knowledge. So think about chunking and connecting it to what you already know. You want to look for patterns because that's what your brain does, okay? So your brain looks for patterns. It looks for meaning. It tries to condense everything, okay? And then tries to organize. That's a big deal. So... What this means is that you have to do something which is active with your notes rather than just read over them because it's passive. I mean, think about it. How many times have you just like read over a section of your notes or an entire page and realized you couldn't remember a thing on there? Okay, so that's passive learning. We've got to switch that to active because that ultimately is, when it, is the method you're going to need to remember it. So we've talked about why note-taking is essential, but the things I want you to keep in the back of your mind is that this promotes active listening, provides an accurate review, okay, which is so incredibly important. Note-taking makes you restructure your information. So you have to interpret it where you give it meaning. You have to condense it and organize. So if you guys remember that mind mapping exercise from that video, that TED Talk, um, really, you don't want to just be a person that's just transcribing, okay? You want to actually be thinking about it and give meaning to it, and this is what um, ultimately helps you to learn the information. And the other thing note-taking does is it provides rep repetition because ultimately that's one of the most important things when it comes to learning. So the slides that we're going to be using for the next um, few sections, I borrowed off of the web from a PowerPoint, and I'm going to give credit to that at the end of this week. Um, I apologize for not doing that ahead of time, but these were so good. I just wanted to show them to you because um, they do this amazing job of showing what's called the forgetting curve, okay? So the forgetting curve basically illustrates how much information that you will lose if you don't review your lecture notes, okay? So the thing I want you to think about, um, those of you that may or may not be science oriented, so whenever you see a graph, the first thing you do is not panic, <laughs> okay? So we don't panic. The second thing you do when you see a graph is you look at the axis, okay? So um, on the x-axis, which is along the bottom, that's the time since review of the information, okay? And then the percent forgotten is along the y-axis that goes, you know, from the bottom up, okay? And so what I want you to realize from this is that 60% of the information from lecture will be forgotten after only nine hours. Think about that, guys. You spend all this time in lecture, and you're going to forget 60% of it if you don't review it. If this doesn't convince you to review your notes, I don't know what will, <laughs> okay? So review your notes. And then we have a few more slides on this that might shock you even more. But to me, it's absolutely fascinating and a little bit scary. So, so as we consider our forgetting curve, um, after two days, you lose 70% or sorry, 75% of the information is gone. 
Think about that, guys. Um, if you neglect your notes, you're going to forget 75% of it after two days. Okay? It's crazy how much that we forget. So what does this tell us? Well, the first thing it tells us is that uh, note-taking has to be active and ongoing. Okay? So you need to organize and review. You've got to understand and you've got to remember. Because if you wait too long, you're going to forget everything completely. Okay, so you constantly need to be taking notes and you constantly need to be actively reviewing them and asking questions and quizzing yourself and all sorts of other good stuff if you're truly going to remember this. All right. And the thing I'm going to warn you about now, you've probably already figured this out, but one of the things people struggle with in early bio classes is learning the details. Okay. The way you learn the details is to learn the big overarching concepts first. And then once you've got that down, you can zero in on those details. All right, but you've got to keep reviewing those notes and you've got to keep going over them again and again and again. So let's talk about those notes and um, characteristics of good notes. Okay, so good notes have to be organized. You need to know where to find your stuff. Okay, you also need to distinguish main points from details. And this comes with learning subject matter, by the way. So the more you learn it, the more you figure out what the main point is and what the details are. Good notes should also include examples. That's incredibly important. Okay. And also um, indicates the lecture patterns. Good notes should allow for self testing. They should stand the test of time. Okay. Now, science is constantly changing and you constantly update them. But realistically speaking, a lot of the basics should still be there. You also, by the way, can use abbreviations because most of the time, if you're writing along, and let's say you're not using mind mapping, or even if you are, the faculty member might talk too quickly. So, abbreviations can definitely be key with regards to getting down some of those details. Now, this might sound cheesy, but realistically speaking, all of your notes should include the course name, the date, you should have a section for the notes, a section for the summary, and a section for a self-test so you can figure out what you really do and don't know. Now, I know in the last discussion I had you guys work on mind mapping, and I wanted you to go ahead and try it out. But mind mapping isn't the only way to take notes, and honestly, it kind of depends on you, okay? So you have to figure out what method ultimately works for you. So we're going to talk about a couple of different ways to take notes. First off, there's what's called the Cornell method. Okay, where you can draw off quadrants of your paper, you take notes in one spot, you then have key terms or, you know, equations or something along that, that line along the side, and then at the very bottom, you go ahead and summarize everything in two or three sentences. Now, personally, I kind of like this method. Um, I think it probably would work well. Um, but again, the key is to kind of find a balance between writing everything down where you're actually processing the information and not just memorize, you know, not just transcribing because really you don't get a whole lot out of that. So another method you could use is to draw off quadrants of your paper into three columns. Okay, so this is called the, um, you know, discussion columns. And you've got your questions all the way to the left. You've got the professor's comments in the middle. And you have, you know, some of the details of the, of the hardcore notes on the right. So, you know, it's just another way to do it. But once again, um, the importance is, importance is that you've got a section that you can kind of summarize everything and, or question everything to write down that you're not sure of so you know what to review when you go back. So another method you might consider is the T method, okay, where you've got your notes up top and then you've got uh, room at the bottom to summarize and ask questions. And again, it's kind of entirely up to you with, you know, what you would prefer. So another method you might consider is called split page. And if I was going to choose one, I honestly think I would like this one because this allows you to incorporate the PowerPoints, which by the way, you should always print off ahead of time before you go to lecture. Okay. So print off or download your PowerPoints um, or whatever it is that they're going to give you. And then that goes on the left. And then on the right, you've got your notes and then you've got, you know, self-testing. And so the theme you probably notice with all these is that there's a spot to self-test. And remember, we talked about if you, um, you should be able to go back and repeat the information. And if you can't, that means you don't know it well enough. So that's one of the keys to really truly learning what's going on. So the thing to consider is that before you go to lecture, you're going to want to format your paper. So we've talked about preparing for lecture with regards to um, reading the book, and we're going to talk more about that later ahead of time and so forth. Um, but believe it or not, you also need to format your paper but, um, as you're going to take notes. And so the whole purpose is to make it easier because you know once you actually get in there that you're going to be writing a lot of things down and you're not going to have time to sit there and draw lines. Okay, so 
um, don't panic. <laughs> it just means it involves a little prep time. And so before lecture, you should format your paper and get things ready to go. And it also kind of puts you in that mental state, which is, um, you know, you're going to have to take notes, and you know, you're going to be working. And that's actually a really good thing. So it's kind of prepping you as well. So as you're going through lecture, okay, what you want to do is you want to keep things organized. You want to use abbreviations where you need to. For example, if you look at this particular um, slide here, you'll see they've got the date, they've got page numbers, they've got the topic, they've got things you're supposed to know for the exam. Many times instructors will say, I expect you to know this for the exam. And for Pete's sake, write that down, <laughs> okay? A lot of times we don't think, oh, I'll remember that later. Well, I can tell you that usually goes... <laughs> All right. <laughs> so if they say write it down, put a star by it, circle on it, underline it, I don't care. Okay, but have a system so that you know what to look for. So you've got these shortcuts and abbreviations, and then there's no questions later as you're trying to actually truly learn the information. And then once again, after lecture, you've got to write the key points, okay? You've got to create some questions. If nothing else, create some potential test questions, okay, that you can see your instructor asking. This is what um, makes a big difference between just memorizing information and being able to truly learn it, is that you're trying to apply it, all right? So thinking of the Bloom's taxonomy that we talked about in lecture one, and what you're wanting to do is start bumping up and learning you know, more and more rather than just memorizing what you've been told because you know you're not going to see it the same way on the exam. That's not the point of going to college. Also after lecture, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to summarize. And when you summarize, please put it in your own words, okay? So studies have shown that if you just memorize something verbatim that someone's told you, all you're doing is memorizing it in that context, and that's not helping you to truly learn it. If you really want to learn something, you need to turn the notes around and manipulate them and put them in your own words because that's forcing your brain to actually learn the information that you're trying to learn. So please put them in your own words for sure. So as you're reading through information, remember the whole point is to take this passive activity where you're just sitting there and turn it into an active activity because passively you'll go back and reread something 20 times and if you're like me, you'll never remember it. You've got to make it active before you truly remember it, okay? So active reading is key. So you might be asking yourself, okay, so how do I take reading again and make, take it from being a passive activity to an active one? And I would say, ah, excellent question. Let's discuss that. First thing you do is you preview, okay? And so what you want to do is preview the text, preview the slides. If you print out those slides, hint, hint, you should be printing out your PowerPoints ahead of time. What you want to do is to look them over because it's going to help you to remember it. Okay, look at all the chapter headings and look at all the subheadings of your PowerPoints as well as your textbook. I cannot emphasize this enough. This gives you an idea of what's coming up and helps you to figure out what you need to pay attention to. Okay, by all means, glance over any pictures, charts, or graphs in the section that you'll be reading. Okay, so figure out what it's mean, why is it important, all sorts of other good stuff. You want to read bold or italicized words. Make sure you understand them because you know you're probably going to see them again. <laughs> okay. Read the chapter summary. And then, of course, make sure you can answer those end of chapter questions. All right. So by being able to answer those questions, again, it tells you what you do and don't know. So once you've actually gone through and read your text or your slides or whatever, one of the most important things you can do to truly make sure you understand it is to explain it to someone else, okay? Um, explain what you read and what you learned from that passage of the textbook. Now, my poor husband is not a biology person, <laughs> um, not at all, actually, and so he um, has listened to more biology information and facts and lectures than he has ever wanted to. And the reason is because I know when I explain it to him and it makes sense, that, that means I truly understand something and then I can explain it to all of you. Okay. So grab a roommate, grab a friend, grab someone, you know, that you feel comfortable talking to siblings, parents, whoever, and then explain something to them. Okay. And see if they can truly understand it. When they ask you questions, if you can't answer the questions, go figure it out. It's really important. And then review and review again, and review again. Within a day of your initial reading, you spend 20 to 30 minutes, depending upon the amount of material you cover, going over your notes and the information you've learned. Okay, recite the main points and recite the topics. This is so incredibly important. Other suggestions with regards to reading is to mark it. 
okay? So write notes in your book. You bought the thing? <laughs> write in it. You own it, okay? So write in your textbook. Mark it all over the place. Or if you're reading a scientific paper, mark it up, okay? What do you understand? What don't you understand? What do you need to look up? You know, do you have a question? Okay, don't forget to take frequent breaks. Now, this doesn't mean to sit on Netflix for three hours. <laughs> Not that anybody would ever do that. <laughs> okay, but frequent breaks can be important. Okay, turn to the web. And I'm not talking surfing the web or Netflix. I'm talking things like great resources like Khan Academy or university level resources or something along those lines. Because a lot of times something might be almost clicking but not quite. And if someone explains it just a little bit differently, that's when everything falls into place. Okay, so I hate saying this, but it's true. <laughs> back in my day, <laughs> okay, yes, I'm old. <laughs> but back in my day when I was a student, we didn't have all these great resources online and it would have been so useful. Okay, so take, you, you know, take advantage of what's there. Don't forget to reread. Okay, connect your paragraphs to each other. This is a big one that Sandra McGuire used to suggest is like tying your paragraphs together. Why this first paragraph then the second paragraph? How does it relate to the first one and all sorts of other good stuff? And yes, I know this takes time. Okay, however, the more you do this, the faster you get and the more efficient you get. So in the beginning, this might seem overwhelming, but it takes practice just like everything else. You will get quicker, you will get better at it, and then you'll become much more efficient. Okay, don't forget to change positions. Um, if I knew I have a big upcoming assignment that I'm really dreading or maybe a bunch of papers <laughs> that I'm procrastinating on grading, <laughs> I will kind of shuffle around and I'll try to make it a good experience. So my favorite coffee shop or I'll go out to lunch, you know, or something along those lines. Don't get distracted. Okay, but shuffle around so you're not stuck somewhere daydreaming um, because you quit paying attention 20 minutes ago and then you're not effective anymore. Things you should keep in mind as you're trying to learn the information. Every professor is different, and I know this drives you guys crazy, and I'm sorry. Um, we all have different personalities. We all do things differently. We all tend to emphasize things differently, okay, as far as what's actually important to us. Some will weight the tests and quizzes heavily on what's in the text. Others rely entirely on the lectures. Honestly, that tends to be my style. Um, at the beginning semester, what you want to do is try and find out what the exams will be focusing on. And it's all in how you ask the question, okay? So if you talk to the professor ahead of time and say, okay, if I were going to study for this exam, where do you think I should focus my energy? Should I focus it on the lectures or should I focus it on the textbook? That's a completely fair question. But don't. Do not ask them what's going to be on the exam. Because <laughs> honestly, that just makes us sad, <laughs> okay? So it's not what you're asking, it's how you ask it, okay? So ask them, what should I, you know, focus on the most? What do you feel um, is the most important thing for me to know? And they should be reasonable and willing to talk to you about that. So that's, that's a fair question to ask. So remember, we talked before about retaining information and recall, okay? That was um, one of the things we talked about in the last lecture. So remember, the best way to retain information from textbooks is to read aloud. And I hate to say it, but it is so true. And I can tell you this from personal experience in college. I used to just isolate myself in a um, closet somewhere or a dorm room or a, a cubby over at the library and I would read aloud because again it's turning it into active okay also discuss what you've read with others okay and so reciting it moves it from your short term to your long term remember all these things are connected all right and by doing so this is what helps you really um, tackle the subject and make sure that you've really got it down so as you reflect, what you want to do is review chapter headings, subheadings, uh, words, ask yourself what you know, what you don't know, answer questions you've developed while you've previewed the text. You want to predict the answers and then find out if you're right, because once again, it's forcing you to think through this and think through what you're reading, looking for this information. Read aloud. Okay, this improves comprehension and helps you to retain information. And then you kind of want to get a picture in your mind of the concepts presented. I personally think that this picture cons should consist of a mind map um, myself, just because I think that would really help with regards to the textbook because there's so much information in there. And this also could potentially help you to visualize things, different concepts, and make it easier for you to remember. I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, I hope I addressed the questions that you've had. Please come see me this week, okay? So if you can't come to office hours on Monday, which I'll be in the office most of Monday, just send me an e email, check in with me, make sure everything's going okay. And if you have to come see me, by all means, let me know and we'll make time, 
All right. Um, your assignment this week is going to be for you to try one of the note taking methods that we talked about. So either the Cornell or the T method or the three columns or whatever, and then kind of see what you like best. You are more than welcome to record the lecture, double check to make sure your, your faculty member, your professor is okay with that, and then figure out which method works for you. Um, I want you guys to, you know, kind of use this as as um, a way to try things out to figure out what you like best and then don't forget the discussion which I will be working on in a few minutes and I'll get I'll go ahead and um, get that uploaded as well so I wish you a wonderful week please check in with me this week and let me know how things are going and I look forward to seeing you take care